Hello. This week, a listener wrote in to ask me why it is that Yosef cries so often. Yosef is charismatic, he's troublesome, he's emotional, he's self-absorbed, and he's certainly confrontational. Yet he's a crier. The motive of Bechi, of crying, carries us through the last three parshias in Bereshis, which talk about the key part of the Yosef story, from when Yosef is elevated to greatness in Egypt up to his death in two weeks' time. And often, although not always, when Yosef cries, his brothers, his father, the other players in the story do not cry. Rav Aaron Lichtenstein, who, Zichron Livrocha, who was the Rosh Hashiva of the Gush, spoke about this subject in 2006, and he lists a number of occasions, seven or eight, when Yosef cried from this week's Parsha onwards. Here in this week, the brothers appeared before Yosef in Egypt. They've come to buy food. He hears them talking. He recognises them, but they do not recognise him. And the Torah says, Yosef turned away from them and wept. Later in the story, still in this week's Parsha, when Binyamin finally appears before Yosef, the text says that he felt compassion towards his brother, and he wanted to weep, so he entered his private chamber and wept there. Next week in Vayigash, when Yosef faces his brothers, when they are in distress because of the episode of the cup found in Binyamin's sack, and just before he reveals his identity to them, the text says that he gave his voice to weeping, and the Egyptians and the house of Pharaoh heard. Then he reveals his identity, and when he connects with Binyamin, he fell upon the neck of Binyamin, his brother, and he wept. And here Binyamin wept upon his neck all, all, as well. And he kissed all of his brothers and he wept upon them, still mostly him crying and not them. Towards the end of next week's reading, his father ascends to Egypt, or descends to Egypt, and they finally meet after so many years. Yosef made ready his chariot and he went up to Goshen to meet Israel, his father. And he presented himself to him and he fell upon his neck and he wept upon his neck a good while. Yosef weeping, but not Yaakov. Turning to Vayechi in two weeks' time. First, the death of Yaakov, when Yosef is recorded as crying. And there's also broader crying in the land of Egypt. And finally, a curious one. After Yaakov dies, the brothers articulate a concern that Yosef will now take revenge on them for having sold him. They say, your father did command before he died, saying, please forgive the sin of your brothers. The brothers say this to Yosef, and they appear to have made it up because they're frightened. And Yosef's reaction, Yosef wept as they spoke to him because he had no intention of taking revenge. What do we make of all this crying, which seems to characterise Yosef's adult life? Now, Rabbi, Yaakov, Rabbi Aaron Lichtenstein claims that this crying, and this is a quote, has no uniform monolithic motivation or manifestation. It's a profound and diverse expression. There can be tears of sorrow, joy, mourning, celebration, collapse, excitement, helplessness, courage, supplication, despair, guilt, self-rebuke or repentance. And Rav Lichtenstein then analyzes each separately in his vein, but in this vein. But my suggestion is that I think he has missed a common theme. There is a single motif in all this crying. The personality of Yosef is very complex and he has very clearly an identity issue. Is he a Jew? Is he a non-Jew? Is he a leader of the Jews? A prominent member of his own family, which is now growing into a nation? Or is he a leader of a non-Jewish world? Is he a catalyst for change? Or is he simply the next link in a chain that goes back to his father, grandfather, right back to his great-grandparents? Is he a feeder or is he a receiver? Is he a divisive figure or is he a peacemaker? Is he a good son or a man who has caused his father untold anguish? Is he the man who realises dreams or the man who frustrates them? Each time Yosef cries, I believe that he is experiencing, confronting, even revisiting that confusion, facing his past and all the challenging relationships and problems which have left a trail behind him. In short, 
every moment that we've, we've, we've listed here is an identity crisis. It's about who he is. It's about how he relates to his brothers, his father, to his own identity. In short, Yosef cries when his identity crisis surfaces once again. I won't go through them each in turn, but this view is validated by a short comment on the word Bechi crying, a Bechia, from the Kasav Vahakabola of Yakasvi Mecklenburg, written in the 1830s. He said the word Bechia, crying, rather than shedding tears, Demois, which means something else, Bechia means Mavoicha Shebelev, an internal confusion, with the word Mavoicha meaning confusion and Bechia etymologically linked. It's crying. Yosef cries as he confronts his brothers, as he confronts his father's arrival, his father's death, and finally as he confronts his own guilt for his behaviour towards his brothers when they come to buy food. He cries through his confusion to express his confusion. He cries for himself. He cries for his fragmented identity. And finally, he cries as he confronts who he has become and what he has done. Shabbos, Zeitgesundstag.